Hello, I'm Atuba George, and thank God today is Friday. Praise God. Now, we we are in the month of June, and this is the first Friday in the month of June. Praise God. Let me tell you something. God has a special plan for your life, and you need to understand it. You need to get to that place where you're like, I accept it mentally. You see. I was sharing with you on Monday. The reason people don't see results in their lives is because they don't mentally apply themselves to the Word of God. You receive the Word of God in your spirit. But you see, you carry it out from your mind. Are you getting what I'm saying? Until the Word of God begins to influence your thinking, you don't see any change in your life. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We submit our hearts and our minds to be influenced by your spirit and your truth. Thank you for your great power that is at work in us. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. We, we've been looking at the, what holiness is. And our text is from Romans chapter 12. And from verse 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He says, do this as your reasonable service. Do what? Present your body as a living sacrifice unto God. And make sure it's a quality sacrifice. How is it a quality sacrifice? Let me tell you this. You can just say, Father, I present my body as a living sacrifice to you. You know, you, you can be a lady and say, I present my body as a living sacrifice to you. No man is going to touch this body. And you know, you're talking about sexually. No man is going to touch this body. It's nice. Yes, it's nice. But it's much more than that. See, it's much more than that. When you present your body to the Lord as a living sacrifice, you are saying from this moment on, I will only do what God wants me to do. You see, I, on, 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 on Wednesday, I was talking to you about, I was giving an example about the pulpit. See, I said something, I said, now, you can say this pulpit belongs to God because it's in the church. But you see, someone from outside can come and say, oh, please, I need that pulpit. Naturally, your disposition will be, no, I'm sorry, I can't. But there may just be a circumstance why you leave that person having said no. The Lord will say, hey, give it to him to use. See? All right? But, he said, give it to him. Now, they are using it doesn't desecrate the pulpit that is already holy. It is holy because it is now under the full care of the Lord. So if the Lord says, allow them to use it, he knows why he wants them to use it. It is much as holy as it is when it's in church. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when you say, I present myself as holy unto the Lord, it doesn't mean you don't go anywhere again. You just stay in one place and, and stay only in church. And uh, No, what you're actually saying is from henceforth, I'll do nothing except what God commands me to do. I will say nothing except what God commands me to say. I don't belong to myself anymore. Now I belong to God. So he will use me the way he wants to use me. That's what you're saying. And now it, it just means you can't just get up and say, hey, I feel like doing this. Now you go before the Lord and say, Lord, is this you inspiring these thoughts in my heart or not? Because if you're not inspiring these thoughts in my heart, then there is nothing I can do. Now you begin to grow in that place where you begin to understand. Let me tell you this. When you begin to practice this, because now notice it says, I beseech you. See, now that's to tell you something. 
That's the thing. It doesn't come naturally. You see, it's something you do willingly. Sometimes people go to church for many years and they don't see any change in their lives. You know why they don't see any change in their lives? They don't apply their hearts to the word of God like he is telling you. He says, present yourselves as a living sacrifice unto God. You remember one time God spoke to Abraham after Abraham had Ishmael. And God spoke to him. That's in Genesis chapter 17. He says, hey, I'm almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. Now, why is God saying walk before me and be blameless? See, because he's been walking with the Lord. But for one time, he decided to take an advice from his wife, you know, and, and just go ahead and do what she thought was right. And then that's how Ishmael was born. And you know what it is? You know, you can just imagine, you know, Abraham is coming home saying that, ah, Sarah, say, yes, my Lord, we're going to have a son. We're going to have a son. He said, hmm, how do you know? God told me that he will give me a son. In fact, the other day, God specifically said, Eliezer will not inherit my stuff. That a son who will be born from my loins. He said, oh, really? Yeah. Then one day Sarah woke up with a dream. My Lord, yes, my dear. I just thought of something. Say, so what is it? You know, hey guy is my property. She belongs to me, right? Say, so yeah, I know. Now, it means I can give her to you that she will have a child for me. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and that child will be my child because she is ours. Yeah, I think that's what God has been trying to get you to understand. And Abraham thought about it and said, Whoa, how come I never thought about it? Oh dear, Sarah, you are so wise. I mean, think about how, how did you figure this out? And you know me now, you know me now. I said, yeah, that's true. And Abraham began to contemplate the matter. And he began to contemplate the matter. But there was something Abraham didn't do. He didn't take it back to the Lord, you see? He didn't take it back to the Lord. And that's the mistake we always make. When we, we want to live this life of consecration to the Lord. But we keep making this mistake. The same mistake Adam and Eve made. Now, the problem was not them listening to Lucifer, listening to the serpent. That was not the problem. The problem they made was taking a decision based on what the serpent said to them without contacting the Lord first. Now, imagine if Eve had said, wow, brilliant idea. I've never really looked at this tree. Come to think about, about it. You know, the Bible says when, when he spoke to her, she looked at the tree. I said, come, come to think of it. It's a normal tree. It's good for food. Whoa. How come we've just been thinking this tree is some one holy righteous? <laughs> you understand? And then she's like, it's fruit. Yeah. Okay. I'll eat it. Now what should they have done? Wow, Lucifer. Wow, you just made me realize this tree is it's actually a normal tree but there's there must be a reason God said we should not eat of it you know, I love your ideas but hold on when God comes to this evening you know, in the cool of the day to fellowship with us we're going to ask him this thing you just said that would have solved the problem <laughs> you understand what I'm saying that that's how to live a consecrated life ideas can come into your heart the same thing with Abraham Sarah brought up that idea hey guy she can have a child and it will be my child. And Abraham thought about it and said, yes. He could have said, all right, hold on. Let me approach God and ask him this matter. He said, Lord, is this what you've been trying to tell me? That, hey, guy. And God would have told him, no, sir. Sarah. Praise God. And, and, you know, it's so amazing. Now, now, he, he, he got hey, guy pregnant. And you know the story. And then God shows up after many years. Say, Abraham, walk before me. Because Abraham had actually dead. He, what he's telling you here in Romans chapter 12, Abraham has done it. He has presented himself as a living sacrifice. He has presented himself holy. And Abraham will not do anything except what God commands him to do. Yeah. You know, you remember when Abraham got to Egypt and 
And we, just before they got into Egypt, Abraham turned to Sarah and said, Hey, Sarah, this thing, as we go into this place, this is how we're going to address yourself, ourselves. You are my sister and I am your brother. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, that's, you know, he said, Abraham told her, like, let me tell you this. Do you know? And I used to think like that until the Lord spoke to me. He said, hey, I was the one that commanded Abraham to say that. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, hey. And then Lord said, that's the reason I protected them. And no one was able to hurt them. If they had done it by themselves, they would have been hurt. Now think about it. The king takes your wife. <laughs> God. And, and listen, just like Pharaoh's case. Now in, in Abimelech's case, that same night, the Spirit of God showed up and said, Hey, you better hand over the man to his wife. And Abimelech said, But I didn't know. He said, Yeah, I know. That's why I didn't hit you. <laughs> God. And then he said, Now return it. And then with a gift. Now, God took them to Abimelech to bring prosperity to them. The same thing God took them to Egypt to bring prosperity to them. But you see, going along the way, God had to tell them how to enter the city. So can God ever tell me to lie? Now, I want you to understand, so you don't start, you know, pushing this thing by yourself. There's a difference when God is leading you. And when you, because you see how God led somebody, you want to lead yourself in that direction. Now, Abraham and Sarah, they were actually brothers and sisters. I mean, in real terms now. Half brother and, you know what I mean, step brother or step sister. Now, that was the truth. But they got married. Now, all God just did is hey, as you're stepping into this place, use the identity of sister and brother, not husband and wife. So, so God may not tell someone who's unrelated like Abraham and say, go and do the same thing like Abraham did. You, I don't, are you, are you get what I'm saying? But see, he will, he will use instances to bless you. But sometimes you never thought about it. And Lord said, that's why he protected them. What am I telling you? Abraham had presented himself wholly to the Lord. So he would not do anything except God tells him to do. But in this one case of Ishmael and Haggai, he didn't ask the Lord concerning it. He went ahead and he got her pregnant. See, So that's why God came and said, Hey, walk before me and be blameless. How do you become blameless? This is just how you be blameless. Never take a decision until you are convinced that is what the Lord is telling you to do. That's how to live a holy life. It's not about you dressing in a certain way. It's not, you, you, do you know, you actually grow to that point where even the Lord can tell you what to wear when you're going out. He will tell you what car to use. He will tell you what house to live in. See, because you are holy unto the Lord. You don't just say, wow, I like the house. I'm going there. No, 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 no. Everything about your life. And guess what? You, you don't just get yourself in there. You get your whole family into that place. Praise God. And that's how we live our lives. See. Our children, the school they go to, we, we had to go before the Lord and say, Lord, you know we can't do anything except you, you tell us what to do. So Lord, we are asking you right now, which school do you want our children to go to? Where we live. It was the Lord that took us to that place and said, this is the place. Praise God. Everything about your life. And that's how to consecrate yourself. That's how to present yourself as a living sacrifice unto God. You begin to practice this day in, day out, and then you will see how God will begin to manifest this blessing over your life. You will see how God is going to start taking care of you, praise God. And, and oh dear Lord Jesus, you will see miracles you never imagined in your life, praise God. Listen, take this weekend and, and, and sit down with this scripture, look at it, and make that conscious decision. From henceforth, Lord, I present myself as a living sacrifice to you.
I'm going to tell you next week, I'm going to start telling you next week how God takes care of his own. Praise God. I don't want you to miss next week's broadcast. It will surely bless you. Have a wonderful weekend and God bless you. Bye-bye.